Hello! My name is Emily Rondell and I am with the Community Learning Team here at the Toronto and Region Conservation Authority. Today I am here at Etienne Park on the banks of the Humber River watching the salmon run. This is a special time of year that salmon are running upstream from Lake Ontario into smaller rivers, creeks, and other tributaries to spawn. So this is a great time of year to get to know your local salmon species, and we'll go over them one by one for you. The three main types to know here are Atlantic salmon, coho salmon, and chinook salmon. So one important type of salmon to know is the Atlantic salmon, which is the Greater Toronto Region's only native salmon species. Now, as you might get from the name, the Atlantic salmon is normally associated with the East Coast and the Atlantic Ocean, and they do live there too. Atlantic salmon in the ocean live most of their lives at sea, and then when it's time to spawn, they run upstream to freshwater lakes and streams where they spawn. Unlike some Pacific salmon species that we have here, Atlantic salmon can survive the spawning process and many return back to sea and repeat the spawning part of their life cycle in subsequent years a number of times. Some populations of Atlantic salmon never live in salt water at all. They live their entire life cycles in fresh water and these populations are known as landlocked Atlantic salmon. So historically, Lake Ontario had the world's largest population of landlocked freshwater salmon. And for thousands of years, Atlantic salmon fed people here and were a really important food source for both indigenous peoples and also for early European settlers alike. John McQuaig, who was the superintendent of fisheries for Upper Canada, remarked that during the spawning season, Atlantic salmon were so thick in the waters of the Toronto area that they could be scooped out either with a shovel or even with your hands. By the 1800s, catches of Atlantic salmon here in the waters around Lake Ontario were so extensive that the wife of the first Lieutenant Governor General of Canada, uh, Elizabeth Simcoe noted in her diary that these Atlantic salmon were both caught and sold by the barrel full. Fishing pressures resulted in a decline in Atlantic salmon here in the Greater Toronto Area, and so did increasing pressures from urbanization. Um, as Toronto grew, land was cleared away from our river valleys, and this resulted in erosion and also in water bodies, streams and tributaries warming up. The warm and cloudy water did not provide ideal conditions for Atlantic salmon eggs. In addition, the need to power a growing urban population within Ontario meant that most of the tributaries leading into Lake Ontario were dammed, which made it very difficult for Atlantic salmon to reach their spawning grounds in many cases. From a result of all of these pressures, Atlantic salmon had disappeared from Lake Ontario and its surrounding waters by 1900. There have been sporadic efforts to reintroduce Atlantic salmon since around the 1940s, but the most recent efforts to do so have also been the most successful. In 2006, the Lake Ontario Atlantic Salmon Restoration Program was launched, and it's also known as Bring Back the Salmon. Bring Back the Salmon is a partnership between MNRF, the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters, and a whole variety of other nonprofit and governmental groups as well. Duffins Creek, which is one of the tributaries within TRCA's jurisdiction, is one of the watersheds that's focused on for the Bring Back the Salmon program. If you do go out looking for salmon now during the salmon run and spawning season, you are unlikely to actually see a native species of salmon in the waters around Lake Ontario. The majority of salmon that we have in our salmon run are actually Pacific salmon species, and most of these salmon are either coho or chinook salmon. So coho salmon are also known as silver salmon or occasionally silvers. They are not native to the Great Lakes, and their traditional range includes both sides of the Northern Pacific Ocean, but occasionally as far south as Northern California as well. Coho were introduced into the Great Lakes as early as the 1870s as a sport fish from the American side. Ontario first stocked coho in the 60s into Lake Ontario, Nipigong Bay, and Lake Superior. 
cohos typically migrate later than other types of salmon and they travel longer distances to get to their spawning grounds. Like all Pacific salmon species, cohos only spawn once in their lifetime, usually at the age of around three years old. After they spawn, they die. During spawning, males are usually the first to arrive on the spawning grounds. Females arrive later and excavate nests or reds. Spawning for coho salmon takes place normally between early September and early October. Both male and female adult coho salmon die soon after spawning. Eggs hatch the spring after they were spawned and young salmon stay in their natal stream or tributary for up to a year after they hatch. The year after, they travel down the river into, in this case, Lake Ontario, where they live out the rest of their adult life before spawning. The Chinook, or King Salmon, is the other main salmon species that you'll see during the Toronto Salmon Run. Chinook Salmon are called King Salmon because they're the largest salmon species that we see here. Like the Coho Salmon, Chinook Salmon are native to both sides of the Northern Pacific Ocean. Because they are so large and because they are prized by anglers, Chinook Salmon have been introduced to many parts of the world, including New Zealand, Patagonia, and of course Lake Ontario. Like the coho, Chinook salmon have been stocked into Lake Ontario as early as the 1870s, but it wasn't until the 1970s that stocking efforts were really successful here. Um, stocking efforts during the 1970s increased in order for Chinook salmon to hopefully control the alewife population in Lake Ontario, which is an invasive and nuisance fish from the Atlantic Ocean. Chinook salmon spawn in larger and deeper waters and other types of salmon and they can be found on their spawning beds anytime from September all the way into December in certain cases. After laying their eggs, females may guard their reds or nests for up to 25 days before they pass away while males may seek another mate. All of the three salmon species that we see in Lake Ontario and the surrounding waters change dramatically during the breeding season. Atlantic salmon turn an olive color, coho turn a brighter red color, and chinook turn kind of a deep maroon. In pretty much all cases, male salmon become much brighter than the females as well. You can look out for migrating and spawning Atlantic, coho, and chinook salmon in rivers, streams, and tributaries all throughout the greater Toronto area at this time of year. If you do go to try and find them, see if you can find the fishes, maybe try and identify which species they are, and see if you can also tell the males from the females at the special time as well. <laughs>